I went to Russia three times to, to look at buying um, a refurbished ICBM. I can tell you it was very weird going there in, in 2000, late 2001, 2002, going to the, the Russian rocket forces and saying, I'd like to buy two of your biggest rockets, uh, but you can keep the nuke. What is the most useful thing that I could, what could I say that, that could actually be helpful or useful to you in the future? I thought I'd perhaps uh, tell the story of um, how, I, how I sort of came to be here. How did some of these things happen? And, and maybe there's some lessons there, because um, I, I often find myself wondering how did this happen. When I was young, I, I, uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do uh, when, when I got older. Uh, people kept asking me. and, and um, but, but then eventually I thought that the idea of inventing things would be, would be really cool. And th the reason I thought that was because I, I read a quote from Arthur C. Clarke which said that a, um, a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And, and that's really true. Um, if, you if you go back, say, 300 years, the things that we take for granted today uh, would be, you'd, you'd be burned at the stake for. Um, you know, being able to fly, um, that's crazy. Uh, being able to see over long distances, being able to communicate, having um, effectively with the internet uh, a, a, a group mind of sorts, um, and having access to all the world's information uh, instantly from almost anywhere on the earth. This is, this is stuff that, that really would be magic, it would be considered magic um, in, in times past. In fact, I think it actually goes beyond that because there are many things that we take for granted today that weren't even imagined in, in times past. They weren't even in the realm of magic. So it actually goes, goes beyond that. So I thought, well, you know, if, if, if I can do some of those things, basically if, if, if I can advance technology, then that, that's like magic and that would be really cool. Somebody is doing something that is useful to the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world. Like, you know, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, and, and frankly, even if it's something, if it's like just a little game, um, or, you know, the, <laughs> some improvement in photo sharing or something, if it, if it, has, if it has a small amount of, of good uh, for a large number of people, um, that's, I mean, I think that's, that's fine. Like, Stuff doesn't need to be changed the world just to be good. Whatever this thing is that you're trying to create, what would, what would be the um, utility delta compared to the current state of the art times how many people it would affect? So that's why I think um, having something that, has a, that's, that has a, makes, makes a big difference but affects a sort of small to moderate number of people is great, as is something that makes e even a small difference but, it, but affects a vast number of people. When I was a kid, I was wondering kind of what's the meaning of life, like why are we here, what's it all about, and um, I came to the conclusion that uh, what, what really matters is trying to understand the right questions to ask, and the more that we can increase the scope and scale of uh, human consciousness, the better we are able to ask these questions. If you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system. Um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring, and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring uh, and make life worth living. I studied uh, physics and business because I figured in order to do a lot of these things you, you need to know how the universe works and you need to know how, how, how the economy works um, and you also need to be able to bring a lot of people together to work with you to create something because it's very difficult to do something as, as an individual if it's, if it's a significant technology. I, I originally came out to, to California to uh, try to figure out how to improve the energy density of, of um, uh, of, of electric vehicles, basically to, to try to figure out if there was an advanced capacitor that, that, that could serve as an alternative to batteries. And um, that was in 95, and that's also when the internet uh, started to happen. And, and it, I, I, I thought, well, I can either uh, pursue this, tech, this technology where success may, be, may not be one of the possible outcomes, which is always tricky, or 
participate in the internet and, and be, be part of it. So I decided to, to drop out. Did some internet stuff, one of which was PayPal. I think maybe it's helpful to say one of the things that was important then in the creation of PayPal was, uh, was, was kind of how it started because initially, the, the initial thought was with PayPal was to create an agglomeration of financial services. So, so if you have one place where all of your financial services needs would be seamlessly integrated and, um, and, and work smoothly. And then we had like a little feature which was to do email payments. Um, and whenever we'd show the, show the system off to someone, uh, we'd show the hard part which was the, um, the agglomeration of financial services which was quite difficult to, to put together. Nobody was interested. Then we'd show people email payments which was actually quite easy and everybody was interested. I think it's important to, to, to take feedback from your environment. You want to be as closed loop as possible. We focused on email payments and really try to make that work and, and that's what really got things to take off. But, but if, we hadn't, if we hadn't responded to what people said then we, we, we probably would not have been successful. So it, it's important to look for things like that and, and focus on them when, when, you, when you see them and correct uh, your, your prior assumptions. Going from PayPal, I thought it will what are some of the, the, the other problems that are likely to most affect the, the future of humanity? It really wasn't from the perspective of what, what's the rank ordered best way to, to make money, um, which, which, is, which is okay, but it, it was really what I think is going to most affect the future of humanity. So I, I think the, the biggest terrestrial problem we've got is uh, sustainable energy but the production and consumption of energy in a sustainable manner. If we don't solve that this, this century, this century we're, we're in deep trouble. Um, and then the, the other one being the extension of life beyond Earth to make life multiplanetary. Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's the basis for, the, the latter is the basis for, for SpaceX and the former is the basis for Tesla and, and Solar City. When I started SpaceX, um, I, it, it actually, it initially, I thought that, well, there's, there's no way one could possibly start a rocket company. Uh, I wasn't that crazy. Um, but, but then uh, it, I thought, well, what is a way to um, increase NASA's budget? That was actually my initial goal. So I, I thought, well, if we can do a low-cost mission to Mars, something called Mars Oasis, which would land seeds with, uh, with, dehydrate, with, with seeds and dehydrated nutrient gel, and you hydrate them upon landing, and then you'd have this great sort of money shot of green plants on a red background and I thought well that that would get people really excited and and uh, and therefore increase NASA's budget so so obviously the, the financial outcome from such a mission would probably be zero. I gave basically both SpaceX and Tesla from the beginning um, a probability of less than 10 percent of likely, likely to succeed. We, we almost did die at SpaceX actually so we I budgeted for for three flights um, I mean, technically, I, I did have a plan where I, I had, a, had, this, had the money from PayPal. I had like about 180 million from PayPal. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'll allocate half of that to SpaceX and Tesla and Solar City, and um, that should be fine. I'll have 90 million, like just lots, you know. But but then what happened is um, things cost more and took longer than than I thought. So I had a choice of either put the rest of the money in or their companies are going to die. So I, so I, put, I ended up putting all the money in and, and borrowing money for rent from friends. I went to Russia three times to, to look at buying um, a refurbished ICBM. I can tell you it was very weird going there in, in 2000, late 2001, 2002, going to the, the Russian rocket forces and saying, I'd like to buy two of your biggest rockets, uh, but you can keep the nuke. They thought I was crazy, but, but I did have money. After making several trips to, to Russia, I, I came to the conclusion that, that actually uh, uh, my, my initial impression was, was wrong about, uh, that, because my initial thought was, well, that, that there's not enough will to explore and expand beyond Earth and have a Mars base and that kind of thing. But I came to the conclusion that that, that was wrong. Um, in fact, there's plenty of will, particularly in the United States, uh, because the United States is a nation of explorers, of people who came here from, from other parts of the world. And I think it, the United States is really a, a, distil, a distillation of the, the spirit of human exploration. So af after my third trip, I said, okay, well, we, what we really need to do here is try to solve the, the space transport problem and, uh, and started SpaceX. Um, and uh, this, this was against the advice of pretty much everyone I talked to. 
My one friend made me sit down and watch a bunch of videos of rockets blowing up. Let me tell you, he wasn't far wrong. It was tough going there in the beginning uh, because I'd never built anything physical. I mean, I'd built like little model rockets as a kid and that kind of thing, but I never had a company that built anything physical. So I had to kind of figure out how to, how to do all these things and, and bring together the right team of people. We did all that and, and then failed three times. It, 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 it was tough, tough going. Because the thing about a rocket is that the, the, the passing grade is 100%. You don't get to actually test the rocket in the real environment that it's going to be in. So I think so the best analogy for, for rocket engineering is, is like if you want to create a really comp complicated bit of software, um, you, you can't run the software as an integrated whole, and you can't run it on the computer it's intended to run on. But the first time you put it all together and run it on that computer, it must run with no bugs. The first launch, I was picking up bits of rocket near the, near the launch site. It was a bit sad. We learned with, with each successive flight, and, uh, and we're able to, with, uh, eventually with the fourth flight in 2008, uh, reach orbit. And that was also with the last bit of money that we had. Uh, so we, we got the Falcon 1 to orbit, and then began to scale that up to, to the Falcon 9, which is um, about an order of magnitude more a thrust. It's uh, around a million pounds of thrust. And we managed to get that to orbit, and then uh, developed Dragon spacecraft, uh, which um, recently was able to dock and return to Earth from the space station. It's a, it's a huge relief. Still can't quite believe it actually happened. But there's a lot more that, ha that, that, that must happen beyond this in order for humanity to, be, to become a spacefaring civilization, and ultimately um, a multi-planet species. And that's something I think it's, it's, it's vitally important, and, and I hope um, that, that some of you will, will participate in, in that, either at SpaceX or, or at other companies, because it's just really one of the, the, the most important things for the preservation and extension of consciousness. I mean, it's worth noting, as I'm sure people are aware, that the Earth has been around for four billion years, and uh, civilization, at least in terms of having um, writing has been around for 10,000 years, and that's being generous. So uh, it's, it's really uh, it's somewhat of a tenuous existence that, that uh, um, civilization and, and consciousness as, as we know it has, has been on Earth. And I think um, I, I'm, actually, I'm actually fairly optimistic about the future of Earth, so I don't want to, I don't want to sort of people to have the wrong impression that I think we're all about to die. I think things will most likely be okay for a, for a long time on Earth. But not, not for sure, but most likely. But, but even if it's, if it's sort of 99% likely, one, a 1% chance is still, it's still worth uh, spending a fair bit of effort to ensure that we have, um, we've backed up the biosphere, you know, planetary redundancy, if you will. In order to do that, there's a breakthrough that needs to occur, which is to create a, a rapidly and completely reusable um, transport system to Mars. Um, which, which is one of those things that's right on the borderline of, 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 of impossible. Um, but that, that's sort of the, the thing that we're, we're going to try to achieve there with, with, with SpaceX. On the Tesla front, uh, the, the goal with Tesla was really to try to show that what, what electric cars can do, because people had the wrong impression. We had to um, change people's perception of an electric vehicle, because they used to think of it as something that was slow and ugly and had low range, kind of like a golf cart. Um, and, and so that's why we created the Tesla Roadster to show that you can be fast, um, attractive, and, and long range. And, and it's amazing how, um, even though you can show that something works on paper, uh, you know, and, and the calculations are very clear, until you actually have the physical object and they can, they can drive it, it doesn't really sink in for people. Um, and so that, that I think is, is something worth noting. If, if you're going to create a company, the first thing you should try to do is create a working prototype. You know, everything, everything looks great on PowerPoint. You can make anything work on PowerPoint. Um, but if you, have a, if you have an actual demonstration article, even if it's in primitive form, that's much, much more effective for convincing people. So, um, so we, we made the Tesla Roadster, and now we're coming out soon with the Model S, which is a, a four-door sedan. Uh, because after we made the Tesla Roadster, people said, oh, sure, sure, we, we always knew you could make a car like that. It's an expensive car, uh, and it's low volume, and it's small, and all that. But you couldn't make a real car. I'm uh, like, okay, fine, we've got to make that too. But um, I think the, 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 the overarching point I, I want to make is that um, you, know, you, you guys are the, the magicians of the 21st century. You know, um, don't let anything hold you back. Uh, imagination is, is the limit. Um, and... Um, Go out there and create some magic.